It's time for the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is the voice of the working class, Rick Smith. Here is Rick Smith. So as the school year wraps up for students, you got these big moneyed front groups there. Well, they're ramping up big uh, on their attacks on public education. And look, this isn't new. Uh, There have always been ideologues and grifters biting at the ankles of our education system, looking for their narrow self-interest. But now now it seems a little different. Seems a little more well-funded, a little more well-coordinated, a lot angrier, a lot more hateful, and way more political. Remember the good old days when good old boy Rick Perry had his oops moment? Couldn't remember the three agencies of government he he wanted to destroy back at 11? Education was one that he remembered. And here to talk about this ongoing assault on our children and the future for our children, I've asked Randy Weingarten to come talk with us. Randy is the president of AFT, the American Federation of Teachers. Randy, thanks for taking time for us. Of course, Rick. It's really great to be with you, and happy Labor Day and happy new school year. So as the school year ramps up, these attacks appear to be ramping up, well, a lot a lot more than I think we've seen in past years. Well, actually, in the last two years, there's been a lot of attacks by the um, extremist groups. I mean, I you know, Mehdi Hassan just did a fantastic... Um, a deep dive into what has happened, which is that in during COVID, you know, a lot of people were scared. There's a lot of deaths. There are a lot of kids that were orphaned. And there were a lot of schools closed by starting with Republican governors for the whole balance of the year um, in 2020, 2021. And then they made a decision for reasons I still don't know that they were just going to open schools without creating any kind of safety issues instead of working with us who were always viewed that you know schools need to be open for kids but they need to be safe for kids and adults and we were trying to do that from april 2020 and from that point on what you've seen is this relentless assault on schools on teachers on public health on pretending that covid didn't exist and on then actually talking about the ramifications of what has happened because of COVID. Not one new idea about what to do about it, but what they're trying to do, and I'm going through this explanation very intentionally, is they just want to create distrust. And they tell us this. Yes. They basically say they're trying to do whatever they can to create distrust because if they do that, they think they're going to get to destroy public education and create universal vouchers. And that's what they're trying to do. So they throw whatever spaghetti on the wall they can throw. They don't have any ideas for how to address kids' loneliness, how to address learning loss, how to address what has happened as a result of COVID. And instead they just smear and smear and smear. So that's what they're doing again this year. And frankly, people are starting to find out because the Washington Post this week connected the dots between the funders and the theocrats like, you know, Christopher Rufo, who says you've got to create universal public school distrust to get universal vouchers, the funders like Betsy DeVos. And then now this lawyer by the name of Farris, who has basically told his funders that the way in which you get to universal vouchers is just take every case in the book, throw out the throw at them, the culture wars, divide, divide, divide. And I guess what I would say is this, we see all of that. And what we have to do, and I have become single-minded about this, public schools are the future of our kids. Public schools are the future of democracy. And our union and our members and teachers across America right now are simply trying to address the needs of kids so that kids can recover and thrive. So. They ban books, we give books out. 
they stop, we call them out when they say we can't teach honest history and we defend people who do. But most importantly, we address loneliness, we address learning loss, we address literacy, and we really try to help our teachers and, and paraprofessionals help all kids succeed. That's what we're trying to do. No, and, and I, I'm 100% on board with that. But I, I look at what the other side's been doing, and for decades, as was reported here. And look, we've been following this for years as well. The the moneyed interests have been trying to destroy public education for a bunch of reasons. Right. One, control. Two, uh, to get into the coffers of Education Incorporated. And three, the religious component that came out in this post article that you talked about uh, because you know i've been talking about the quiverful movement for you know at least a decade now and what their dream is is to be able to put a a backpack of money on every kid so that they can have as many children as they want and have education incorporated pay them to homeschool that's the end goal for a lot of these folks uh, is to get to that point to where they're they're taking money out of the out of the system look you're absolutely right and sorry i'm in a and i'm in an airport talking to you right now you're absolutely right. The end goal is they don't want to strengthen public schools. They want to destroy them. And for whatever reasons they're trying to destroy them, you know, whether it is because of supremacy or whether it is because, you know, of, of you know, of, of segregation, of like, you know, like we saw right after Brown versus Board of Education, or whether it is because they don't want to p- spend the money on all kids. Or, you know, whether it is this Christian nationalism, whatever it is, they, their, their tactics are the same. Smear, 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 create fear, undermine, attack, attack. They don't even have one idea for how, that, you know, how many of them have talked about, oh, you know, learning loss, oh, mental health. And then they cut money from the budget that is supposed to be used for mental health. Then Moms for Liberty says, oh no, we're not gonna do any social emotional learning in schools. So you know this is not about kids. This is about just destroying public education and the opportunity that it comes with. And I'm glad the Washington Post revealed this guy, Farris. I'm glad that people publicly, you know, they're they're saying the quiet part out loud now. Jonah Edelman and I, you know, talked about this in an op-ed last year we don't always get along on everything but we said vouchers and this uh, movement to privatize is fundamentally a movement to destroy public education and the opportunity that means for all kids let me say one more thing are our schools perfect no they're not perfect do we need to do a lot more yes But we need to do, we know what works and we know what we need to do. And that's why our campaign this whole year is real solutions for um, for kids and communities. And I love the fact that Nikki Haley is talking about some of the same issues that I'm talking about. Nobody calls her an extremist. So let's actually Republicans and Democrats alike. Let's focus on literacy. Let's focus on career pathways for kids. Let's get and make sure that school is joyful and fun. And let's do the social emotional um, things we need to do to help create connection for kids and to recreate community. No, no, absolutely. And as a parent, you know, I want uh, the public education system to be as strong as it possibly can to give my kids and others the best opportunities. And I think all parents want that. Uh, at least at least they should. You listen to The Rick Smith Show. We're with Randy Weingarten. She's the president of the American Federation of Teachers. You can check out their website, AFT.org. Uh, the Hill had a story the other day I wanted to get your thought on. Um, it's it, they were talking about uh, the Republicans wanting to do away with the Department of Education, which again I go back to Rick Perry in 2011. One of the three agencies he remembered he wanted to destroy was obviously education. They asked the question, what would it look like if we destroyed the Department of Education? What would it look like if we allowed uh, education to be privatized, profitized, or voucherized? What would that look like? What, what do you, what would the future for our kids look like? Do you think? It would mean that we would have the haves and the have-nots. That's what it would mean. So if you're rich and wealthy and you had a way of, you know, paying very, um, a lot of um, money to get your kids a good education, you'd be fine and everybody else would not. Public education is the route for the middle class to have opportunity. 
just like the labor movement is the route for the middle class to have opportunity. Public education was the route for people who are poor or people who are vulnerable to have opportunity. And frankly, that 1% still has more wealth than, nine, than the rest, the, the 90% of America. And so it is one more stratification of America. One of the things that America has done that almost no other country did, which was create a public education system for all kids and create opportunity. What this would be is just take the ladder of opportunity, just pull it out for the next generation. I think we've done enough negative things for the next generation. Let's not take opportunity away from them. I'm right there with you. I, I got to get your thoughts on the on the most recent decisions coming out of the, the Biden administration. I mean, I got to tell you, I, I, I don't want you to decide on one way or another here, but I think Biden's been killing it policy wise on, on labor rights. Uh, last Friday, you had the uh, the CMEX decision coming out of the NLRB. On Monday, you had the task force saying that we want to encourage more unions. Today, you got, uh, you know, the, the threshold for uh, for wages and, and salaried employees. I I, lately just killing it in my opinion look i think what you have and and you and i've had this conversation um no one is perfect no president is perfect no vice president perfect no union president is perfect no media personality is perfect but if you look at what not even you rick if you look at what joe biden has done it's been incredible. And this year is a year where he has said he's going to try to implement for the good of working people all of the legislative accomplishments um, as well as what, you know, that, that were passed last year and two years ago, but also make the government work for regular folks. So look at the set of drugs selected for Medicare price negotiation. You know, these drugs support millions of people and what happens if they cost a whole lot less you know who's going to lose out big pharma you know who's going to win our seniors and by doing that with the price pressure it's going to put price pressure on to reduce prices on all these drugs for everyone else that case the teamsters case yeah i mean there should be some degree of pain point if a corporation has done anti-union animus, and there should be some way of, of incentivizing good behavior to let people have real decision-making authority about whether they want a union. But also look at the industrial policy. Look what's happened. We have more opportunity to have good jobs in the private sector, a re-industrialization of America, a manufacturing resonance, a re renaissance a made in america and then what we're trying to do in terms of high schools is actually align so that kids in high school can make choices go to college get a job have a good job have credentials to that so what joe biden is doing is he first during covid he tried to turn things around he helped reopen schools safely he got people on a lot of shots he got us out of the worst aspects of COVID, and now he is bringing the economy back in a way that really emphasizes and prioritizes working people and using government to do that. I think it's terrific. It's wow. really terrific. No, we're in an exciting moment because we're returning to the values that I talk about of my grandparents' generation. You know, strong public education, strong investment in, in that education, and also jobs that, that you can support a family on. And and domestic exactly. production for domestic consumption. All of these great themes. Uh, we've got a guy who's, who's doing, he's not saying it, he's actually doing it. So the question that I have for you on this is, how do we pick this up and move it forward? Because I don't think the administration is doing enough to tout what they're doing. Well, I think that we're living in a period of time of great division and, and where people um, are in their tribes. And so it is really a matter of, of neighbors talking to neighbors about this. It's not just on the administration to tout all of this. It's all of us to actually talk about what the real impact is of what um, the president has done. 
and 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 to talk about it in a way that's positive and proactive because a he's trying and b he's getting results so it's on all of us to help make the case clear about what he's done last question i've got for you you know as i said in the beginning of this uh we're ramping up the new school year i see these attacks on public education happening uh, I have parents in my neighborhood saying, hey, what do we do to push back on these these insane groups who are infiltrating our school boards and, and, and all of this? What's the advice for parents in this moment? Because, you know, look, most parents, the vast majority of parents want their local school to be a local public school with the best resources possible and the best teachers at the front of it. What's the uh, what, what's the what's the word for, for parents? Just get involved in any way you can possibly get involved. And if you're not a parent, get involved. When all of a sudden at a school board meeting, there's more people who say, first, let's have a sane debate. Let's not scream at each other. And secondly, let's actually honor the work that's getting done in schools. And if we have differences, let's problem solve the differences. When that starts happening at a school board meeting, the extremists leave. They are, and, and, and look, there are some parents who have legitimate issues about what's going on in schools, and you and we want to hear them. I thought that Terry McAuliffe was wrong when in that debate he said, you know, that, that, that you know, he, he, he seemed to dismiss parent wishes. We need to work with parents. We need to be with parents. And parents and teachers together are an amazing combination. The extremists want to divide. We want to bring people together, even if we don't agree on everything. So just get involved a little bit, anything. Um, vote in school board elections. If there's a spaghetti dinner or a movie night, go and support the school. If there's like a bouncy house festival before a football game, go um, be with the school. We're giving out a boatload of books. We've done 9 million books already around the country. We're going to give out another million this year. Come to one of these festivals where we give out books to kids and to families, help, volunteer. But most importantly, we need to have the beloved community support our public schools, and that then supports our kids and our, our democracy. There you go, Randy. I appreciate the time. Safe travels. Look forward to having you back again real soon. Thank you, Rick. Take care. Good stuff. Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federation of Teachers. Want to hear your thoughts? Email me, rick at the ricksmithshow.com. Going to take a quick break. Right back after this. Stick around. Listen to the Rick Smith Show. We're working people. Come to talk. From the steel mills of Pennsylvania, to the auto factories of Michigan, to the modern makers movement, manufacturing makes our nation great. I'm Scott Paul, president of the Alliance for American Manufacturing. We bring business and labor together to advocate for policies that everyone can agree on. Together, we can strengthen manufacturing and create good-paying American jobs. Help us keep it made in America. The old factory towns in America's heartland have been taking a beating. Thing is, though, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. The Inflation Reduction Act will lower energy prices and create millions of new jobs by dramatically increasing the manufacturing of solar panels, wind turbines, electric cars, and energy-efficient home appliances. We're finally turning things around after 40 years of screwing over working people. But will we keep moving in the right direction? That's our choice as Americans. We are AFGE, the American Federation of Government Employees. We represent 700,000 federal and D.C. government workers who are the vital threads of the fabric of American life. We support our nation's military. We take care of our nation's veterans. We protect our nation's borders. We respond to our nation's crises and natural disasters. We provide services to our nation's seniors. The American Federation of Government Employees. We work... For America. It takes a lot to raise a family. A good job, a good salary, and some patience. A lot of people my age are drowning in college debt. But I chose a different path. I'm a member of the IBEW, 
the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. I work hard for my job, and I love what I do. I had a lot of choices for my future, but I made the best choice for my family. IBEW, the right choice. Welcome back to the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is Rick Smith. I tell you, I, I like Randy Weingarten, and to be honest with you, you know, we need champions like that to defend our public education system. Once, look, once they take that away, you know, she's right. You know, what, what, understand what the Republican Party has been saying for the last 20 years. They want to destroy public education. They want to privatize it. Now, we used to go, well, it's because they believe in the, 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 you know, the free market. You know, it used to be this ideological discussion about competition. It used to be about, you know, best outcomes. And, you know, they, they played on the idea that all of us parents, we want our kids to have the best opportunities. That's just simple reality. Every parent wants their kids to have the best education possible. They prey on that. What we know, the gimmicks that they have brought forth, they don't do any better, and in most cases do worse, except for the few. And the voucher programs, you know, the eye-opener in all of that came for me you know, well over 10 years ago when in my state of Pennsylvania, we had a state senator who claimed he wrote a voucher bill. He didn't write it. It was it was given to him. It was a model. I think it was an ALEC model legislation. Because he clearly didn't understand what was in his bill. Because I asked him, I said, look, if I get this golden ticket, I, uh, if I get this voucher for my kid, because I do, I want my kids to get the best opportunities possible. I want them to have the same opportunities Obama's kids had or, or Biden's kids or Trump's kids had. The wealth class, the upper crust, they always get the best education for their kids. I asked, I said, if I get one of these golden tickets, can I send my kid to this, this elite school in Philadelphia? Uh, and I know how much it costs to go to that school. Kindergarten's like 40 grand a year. You know, first grade's like 50. And he said, absolutely. Absolutely. You get the you get the, the golden ticket, you can send the kid anywhere, and they're gonna take it, they're gonna take your child, and they're gonna get the best education. Now, that's preying on my belief that, hey, I'm gonna get my kid an elite education in a in a you know top private co school in this country. What parent wouldn't jump at that chance? But when you drill down into his legislation, when you drill down into the bill, what you found is all you really got was what your school district was allocating uh, per child. So if your school district is in one of the poorer areas of Pennsylvania where they may spend eight or $9,000 per child, that's all you get. Now that's short of the 40,000 for kindergarten or 50,000 for first grade. So where does that other money come from? Well, it comes from you, you gotta make it up. And most parents don't have that ability. Or if you're from one of the more affluent school districts that may pay upwards of 20000 per student. Even still, you're not at 40, you're not at 50. So that, that sleight of hand that they throw out, that you're going to get to go to these elite schools, is not, is not, is not true. And then I asked, I said, well, if, if I can't afford to send my kids to these, these elite schools, do the people whose kids go there, get this money. And he said, oh, no, we would never do that. Only his bill actually did do that. And what we've found on these voucher fronts in many cases is the people who are already sending their kids to these schools are just getting a windfall. So we're literally making the wealthier wealthier at the expense of poor school districts and making our public, public education system worse off because of less funding. So the question becomes, when do we say enough and when do we fight back? When do we stand up? You may remember 2018 when the teachers in West Virginia went on strike and there was a wave across this country of educators saying, you know what? We demand better wages, conditions. We demand better opportunities for our kids. Conditions, because our working conditions are our kids' learning conditions. When do we say enough? And when do we start 
taking to the streets on the right things. I know why moms from misery groups are out there trying to figure out how to destroy their local public schools. But how do we make them better? See, that's the conversation you don't get out of them because they've, they've got an ideological agenda. And it's not your local school. I'm gonna take a quick break, right back. I've been driving buses for five years and my day-to-day -day routine is I wake up a little earlier than most people. I get on a bus, I go out, I pick up some students and make sure they get to school nice and safe. Here in Fairbanks, Alaska, that can be a challenge because of the winter weather and the icy roads. But I love the job. So the Teamsters are great. They provide us a lot of protections. They've always taken care of their people, made sure that our jobs were secure. We didn't have to worry about whether or not we'd have a job from day to day. Uh, and that's amazing because before we'd be working four, six, eight hours a day and only earning minimum wage was real difficult to make a living. Then the Teamsters pushed a lot. So we make something we can live off of and not have to have a second job. What absolutely gives me peace of mind. The, the union membership allows me to focus on this job without having to worry about whether or not my family is going to be taken care of. I'm Andrew Case and I'm proud to be Teamsters Local 959. The best way to strengthen America's economy? How about investing in America's fastest growing industry? Clean energy. It means millions of jobs that pay well and can't be outsourced. And lower utility costs for families. Congress, let's get it done. Before we close the program, we want to take a moment to thank our viewers and to share a little bit about why we do what we do. At The Rick Smith Show, we believe that media today is almost entirely controlled by corporate greed. So we have now 24-hour news channels. But instead of 24 hours of news, what we get is one hour repeated 24 times and with, with tons of commercials creating obscene amounts of profits. Information once presented as a public service has now become a private commodity. So when lies make money, lies... Lies are what we get. We get a corporate-controlled rage machine feeding us anger and hate, trying to convince us that our problems are right, left, or red, blue, when they are and always have been up, down, the wealthiest 1% versus the rest of us. Our goal is to be an alternative to that machine, not as a news show with a fancy journalist out front, but as a talk show run by a union truck driver, and a team of working class heroes just like you. Everything we do, both what we get right and what we get wrong, is dedicated to advancing the interests of America's working families. No corporate ad buys, no think tanks, no focus groups, no talking points. We are media by working people for working people. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you back here next time. <music>